Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In this laboratory exercise, we are going to be looking at the manipulative variables that affect the physical properties of acrylic resins that are used routinely for prosthetic dentistry. To begin with, in the first section of this experiment, we are going to be varying the liquid powder ratio of our acrylic resins, and also we will be varying the temperature of the monomer involved and seeing what times are recorded as these acrylic resins go through the various consistency changes. To begin with, I'd like to go over with you the four stages that the acrylic resins pass through as they are polymerizing. The first stage is the sandy stage. The second stage is the sticky stage, then the doughy stage, and the stiff stage. The reason we want to emphasize these consistency changes to you is that only during certain phases of the polymerization is the acrylic resin in a favorable state for packing or for manipulating. The first part of this laboratory exercise is very simple. We are going to have you mix various acrylic resins in various ratios and with the monomer at varying temperatures. And we want you to record the time at which these materials pass through the four stages. I'm going to demonstrate for you what these consistency changes are like, and I will record on my sheet the times that it takes for each of these materials to reach a specific consistency change. It's helpful to have a wristwatch or a uh, stopwatch to record the times that you are concerned with. You simply need a mixing jar, and for our purposes today, I'm using a heat-cured acrylic resin. We will also be using chemically accelerated resin for this part of the experiment. I'm going to place the monomer in the mixing jar. The ratios are recorded for you in your laboratory exercise sheet. The first stage of the first consistency change is reached almost immediately when the polymer is added to the monomer. As soon as the materials are brought together, and stir them a little bit, you will reach what we call the sandy stage. The material is a little bit like wet sand. It's merely a wetting of the polymer particles by the monomer. At this stage, the material is really not sticky. It's merely a physical wetting of the polymer particles. Normally, you would be putting this material with the, uh, in the jar and then putting the top on it. Before these lights today, the sticky stage is reached very quickly. The sticky, sticky stage comes when the material adheres to itself. It will also adhere to anything that it comes in contact with, such as your fingers or the mixing spatula. Now, because of the time that it requires to go to the doughy stage, I'm going to fade out in a moment. We'll come back in a minute, and I'll show you when the doughy stage is reached. In the interim time, I place the top on the mixing jar. I think you'll find in the laboratory that it's most convenient to place the top on the mixing jar and check the material at about one minute intervals and to place these different times down at one minute intervals or to the closest minute. This material is setting fairly quickly today because we're in front of the warm lights of the TV camera. I'm going to take the top off of the jar and try to show you what the material looks like when it is in the doughy stage. You can see the material has gone to the bottom of the jar with the top on it, 
And at this point, when it gets to the doughy stage, the material should cleanly pull away from the side of the jar, as you see here. It'll pull right away from the side of the jar very cleanly. It will not do this until you're in the doughy stage. I'd like to pick this material up and show you the other thing that you can do to test the material. When it's in the doughy stage, it will not stick to your fingers. I would like to caution you that normally you do not handle these resins as much as we're handling them here. The monomer of the resin will absorb the oils of your skin quite quickly, even if your hands are very clean. When it reaches this doughy stage, you can put the material together and elongate it slightly, and then when you pull it, it will snap apart, and you can hear it snapping. Now, the other thing you'll know is when it is in the doughy stage, you can put the material back together, and it will stick to itself. You can pull it apart, and then put it back together in a mass, and it will adhere. Again, you can do this repeatedly with the heat-cured resins. The chemically accelerated resins pass fairly quickly through the doughy stage into the stiff stage. Now, with the heat-cured resins, it takes quite a while to do this. So I'm going to place this back into our jar, and then we'll fade out again for a couple of minutes, and it, when it gets into the stiff stage, I'll come back and show you what that is like, and we'll record this time also. The heat-cured resin has now reached the stiff stage, and I'd like to show you what this is like. When we reach the stiff stage, it actually has reached the point where it is inadequate for packing into a mold. You can see it is very difficult to pull apart. The material is no longer very rubbery, but is starting to become stiff, and it will not stick to itself. This is probably the best test for determining when it has reached the stiff stage. It's very important to know this when you're dealing with the heat cured resins for when you get into the stiff stage, if you were to pack the acrylic into your denture molds, you would have a very unsatisfactory product. We've tried to go over with you at this time the four stages the four consistency stages of acrylic resins, both the heat cured and the chemically accelerated or cold cured resins. I've recorded the times on my sheet uh, going over the stages and listing the times, and you will be doing this also and placing the times that you have found on your data sheet. Again, you will be varying the liquid powder ratios considerably and altering the temperature of your monomer and you'll find that it drastically changes the time at which these various consistency changes are reached. In a moment, we will be coming back and going over the second part of the exercise. In this part of the exercise, we are going to be seeing the effect of the processing temperature and the processing pressure on the heat-cured acrylic resins. To begin with, I'm going to show you a denture flask, which you may or may not have seen up until this time. This one happens to be a lower denture flask. A denture flask is composed of four parts, and I'll outline them for you here. There's a circular disc that's placed in the bottom of the lower half of the flask. This is the bottom of the flask, and then the top of the flask, which is keyed together, and the top. In this exercise, you will all be supplied with these, and I will show you now what we are going to do with them. To begin with, we will take the lower half of our flask, and I have already completed this part of the exercise, but I want to show you how to do this. You'll be placing a mix of yellow stone in the lower half of the flask and placing a glass plate on top of it, moving it back and forth to get rid of all the bubbles. And then you will let this set until the final set has been reached. When this happens, you can remove the glass slab and then remove the excess from the periphery 
of the flask and also from the hole. Now at this point we are going to take two wax patterns which I previously made and these are outlined in your handout the size that these are to be. You simply make these two rectangular wax patterns and place them on our stone in this manner. When you have done this, you can now take a number seven wax spatula and proceed to seal them to the stone in this manner. Just take a warm number seven spatula. When you have accomplished this, you can then take the, uh, red soap and place it all over the stone and the wax patterns and rinse it off. This allows for a separating media between the two halves of the flask. When you have done this, you make a mix of half yellow stone and half model plaster and proceed to vibrate it down into the top of the mold, as you see here. Continue vibrating until the mold is filled and then place the top on top of your venture flask and tap it into place. Generally, you can leave these for about a half an hour and when that time has been reached, you can separate the two halves of the flask and remove your wax patterns and you will have something like this. You can see here the shallow rectangle and the deeper rectangle. Now at this point, I'd like to show you another flask that I have previously made. And in these two rectangles, we are going to proceed to put different separating media in the depths of the rectangles. Here you can see tin foil, cellophane, an alginate separator, and Vaseline. And all of these materials will be supplied for you. The reason we are doing this, we would like to see what effect the separating media has on the quality and the finish of the acrylic that we are going to be producing. Previously, I mixed a heat-cured resin, lucitone, and I'd like to show you at this time how you will pack this material in your mold. I have here a flask press. Now, I'd like you to keep in mind that normally we do not use these for packing our denture molds. However, before the camera, it's most convenient to use this, and you will be using this in the laboratory. We do have large hydraulic presses and large manual presses that are used to pack the acrylic resin into the mold. But this is a hand-off flask press, and again, we have the two halves of our mold. Now, it's, it is very important that you take an alginate separator, which is a separating media that keeps the acrylic resin from attaching to the stone and you will brush this on all the surfaces of the flask and of the stone that have not been coated as previously mentioned. It is very important to also coat the edge of our small rectangle on all sides. Again, all sides of the top of the lower half of the flask. Also, you want to coat the other half of the flask with the alginate separator. Common materials are Alco or Color Guard, which I have before you here, and you are supplied with these. At this time, we are ready to pack our mold, and I'd like to show you exactly what trial packing is. Again, before we came on camera, I mixed this material, and I'll withdraw it and show you how it is packed into our mold. Now remember, it's very important not to handle this material too much because it will absorb the oils from your hands, it will discolor the material, and it will also change the physical properties. Simply separate the material in two sections and place it in the depths of your mold, as I'm doing here. Now you will also be supplied with some plastic sheets that are polyethylene. At one time, it was very common to use wet cellophane as a separating media when doing the trial packing. However, today we are fortunate to have these very thin polyethylene sheets, 
and you will be supplied with these. You simply place the seed over the heat cured resin and put the other half of the flask together and place it in your press. Now, these presses are designed for two flasks, so I'm going to use our other flask as part of this demonstration. And we place our flask into the flask press. And then just continue to tighten the flask press down. And in a minute, you will see that the press is closed most of the way. It takes about two and a half turns of the handle to close it all the way. And you can see excess acrylic resin exuding from the mold. Now it's important to, to realize that when you're packing these, that if you leave excess flash inside the mold, you're going to be opening the dimension of the flask and, and increasing the vertical dimension of the finished product. This is why we go through this trial packing procedure. At this time, you will separate the two halves of the mold, and you'll see here a tremendous excess. Simply remove the polyethylene sheet, and then take a sharp instrument, which is a red-handled knife, and scribe the edges of the rectangles. And when you have done this, the material will pull away cleanly from the mold. The same thing is done when you are packing a denture. You remove the excess material. Sometimes it's very tenacious, particularly when you're using high pressures to pack your mold. Now, if you were to pack your mold and you did not see any flash, it's a very good indication that you were not using enough material in the original closure. If you were to process a denture in that manner, you would most certainly end up with porosity. So pressure is most important when processing a complete denture. Now, I'm going to pack this one more time, and you'll see that more excess will, or more flash will form. You simply place another polyethylene sheet and place the flask together. And tighten it. And when you do this, it's good to let it set for a moment so the material can move. And remove it again. see again that even after the high pressures that were generated the first time, we still have more flash forming. If this material were in the stiff stage, this would not happen. This is why we went through the sequence as uh, previously outlined. When you're in the doughy stage, you can trial pack these dentures many, many times. It's not unusual to routinely use three trial packing when doing a denture. For our purposes here, I'm only going to do this one time as I've shown you, and then I'll show you how to complete packing the denture flask. We remove the excess. Even with the alginate separator, this material will adhere tenaciously sometimes to your flask. Now, for your purposes, I would suggest you trial pack at least twice, preferably three times, until no more excess is removed from the flask. Now, when you have succeeded in trial packing and no more material is removed, then you will be making your final closures. It's very important to remember that with the final closure of our flask, you do not use the polyethylene sheet. Simply put the two halves of your flask together. Place them back into our flask press. Now it's very important to know that you turn your handle all the way down. And for those of you who are packing at maximum pressure, Turn your handle all the way down, and when it is secure, you back off one quarter turn. 
This allows the very strong springs in the flask press, press to put maximum pressure on the acrylic. Some of you will be processing without pressure and you will turn your handle two times which will leave very little pressure on the mold. At this point in the laboratory, you will be working in pairs. I would like you to take a piece of wood stick, a popsicle stick, and place your name on it in pencil and the processing temperature and conditions that you would like to have your dentures processed under. For the faculty will be, or the staff will be processing these for you. And we will be using water or temperature controlled water baths to do this. So if you would please label your flask, it will make the job much easier for us. We have now outlined the procedures that you will be doing in the laboratory. And when the next session uh, is reached next week, we will return your flask to you, which have been processed under the conditions you outlined. At that time, you will remove the acrylic blanks and record certain conditions that you might observe, such as the finish of the acrylic and the absence or the presence of porosity. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.